All right, we are back. I'm sorry, we had to take our one hour. What up? Welcome back, sir. Thank you, sir. Fine. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. I saw DJ Abbas in the building. DJ Abbas, thank you for coming on. Um, I my, live my, with us. My today. wife is also. My wife is also online. So hello, darling. Oh, Auntie, we are coming to eat food after Corona. My, my wife just turned fifty years old, so I'm giving her a shout out. Oh yeah, happy birthday to her. Thank you. Thank All you, right. my brother. So, let's talk about the gatekeepers. Hmm. The gatekeepers. I don't, I don't like that name. But go ahead with your question. I'll tell you the reason why. Go ahead. You see, I believe some gatekeepers are not, gate, are not the real gatekeepers of our industry. Thank you. Thank you. You've but they call that themselves that the gatekeepers with, with little or no experience or... Yes. Or, or like what we currently say, the clout, or what yes. it takes to be to be called the gatekeepers, because a lot of the gatekeepers have failed us in our industry. Yes. So and what, they, and, and 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 those gatekeepers, those gatekeepers, yeah, they are more interested in their status and their celebrity status and their, you know, for their own, you know, I don't like the, I don't like that word gatekeepers. We don't know what it is so yet in, in Nigeria. In the better use of for the better use of words, right? What would you rather mm -hmm. use to identify and um, to classify them? And what's your take on them? Okay. Uh, you know what they call OG? O like, yeah. when it says OG before IG. Yeah. We have certain OGs in our, in our, in our industry that if, if, if they are the ones that they call the gatekeepers, I would agree. Because you say gatekeepers is not about gates, as in, you know, we, we, don't, we don't let bullshit in. You understand? Yeah. Bullshit stays outside the gate in, of this industry. We don't let bullshit in. Yeah. So, so these, these are the people that we call gatekeeper, gatekeepers. But the people that they call gatekeepers now or culture custodians or, or industry, you know, people like all these titles. You understand? We are our own gatekeepers. All of us. All of us from me, you, I'll do, um, say Mr. Easy, Daddy Shoki. Like, we are all gatekeepers. First of all, we are all gatekeepers of our own careers. So that's the first gate that we are keeping. You understand? And then, if you are now going to be the estate gate or the community gate or the local government gate, it goes by level by level by level. I know it sounds complicated, but it's not. First of all, we have to care about ourselves because we're, we're in this business for business. And then we still have to protect this business so that it can favor us when we are, like me, like me now, our own, our own time don't pass. You understand? Audi was talking about me now, talking about 20 years ago, 22 years ago. You understand? It, you know, my own time don't pass. I'm not going to be dragging anything with anybody now because I've made the right decisions from before and I'm okay. A lot of people that they call gatekeepers, they are still trying to drag the, the spotlight with, with Davido. You understand? They are still trying to drag spotlight and status. And I am this in the industry for, 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 for monetary purposes. You should have made enough money from your career 20, 15 years ago. You understand? And some people who are here now, because they are reigning or they are trending, they start to bestow that title of gatekeepers on themselves, culture custodians. We are the uh, industry. Uh, bullshit. Everybody's out there for themselves. That's our first gate. So when you want to do... Uh, mm. uh, 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 yeah, seriously. When you, want to, when you want to be gatekeeper of community of the music community or the entertainment community. You do not let bullshit in. You do not let bullshit in from foreign. You do not let, you do not let bullshit in from government. You do not let bullshit in from people who just want to come to the industry and spoil it. What we do is, we as we are, we are, we are behind the scene guys, like me and you, you understand? It's a combination of us and the people who are on the scene or on the stage to make this industry stronger and grows bigger and becomes more more what was more profitable for everybody 
You understand? It is not for somebody to now say, oh, yes, uh, who are the gatekeepers of the industry? Let's call, you know, and then they will go to Abuja and go and collect some, they will go and abuse some bullshit terms and then bestow, and not bestow, they, they will now enforce what they have collected to fill their own pockets on the whole industry. So I don't care about any gatekeepers or any cultural custodian. Somebody is telling me that, okay, maybe I'm one of them. I'm not one of them. Me too, I'm still, me too, I'm still, I'm still eating in this industry. You understand? I don't, personally, I don't get into any association or anything like that. People are on this thing. Uh, 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 I'll do my courier, all these people, when, uh, uh, what's his name as well? Who's one of your panelists before? Uh, um, uh, Mustafa, Olumide Mustafa. You know, they call me to join the publisher's uh, association. They will call me to join. Da, 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 da. They, me, I don't join anything. Because I know the Nigerian factor, going back to our attitude, the Nigerian factor will blow everybody's blow, 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 blow up in everybody's face. So I don't believe there's any gatekeepers. We're all keeping our, we're all, we're all in our, if you go to anybody's house, it is their gate that they are minding. It is somebody else that's minding the estate gate. I'm only minding my own gate. So I don't like that term gatekeepers. What we should do, okay, so, what we should do. So my question, uh, my, someone just put a comment here and I had to pause the comment for a bit to read it out. Because this has Nigerian been my fear. Day, I'll do. I'll do Nigerian factor day. Yeah, gatekeeping mm -hmm. in North America. Gatekeepers in North America were too comfortable, not knowing that Silicon Valley was quietly plotting. Yes. Now, yes. Let me, why I post that comment to read it out is because that comment was from official official K Bio. We were having a conversation on this our industry conversation a few days ago. And somebody yes. said, the East Africans are watching us. If we drop a dance, they will dance it better. If our, our sound, they will take it up. Now, they are watching what we are doing. Mr. Easy, say what about state gates? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so the, the East Africans are watching what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Look at Diamond Platinum. And you know they have the numbers. They, are, they, have, mm -hmm. they have even better access to internet than we do. Right? He is also getting, he is also getting our numbers, which is very, you know, he has a song now called JJ. Produced by who? Is it Kelpi or oh, somebody from a Nigerian? He has a song yeah. called Jeje, 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 Exactly. Jeje, Jeje, Jeje. So, so, so he's, now he's eating some of our own money too, which is if fine. we are yeah. not careful, mm -hmm. do you think that we are going to be taken over? Because there was a time I, I know that we felt like this industry already was in a place where it was in a, um, what. What was the better word to use for this? This industry was in a position where we felt like we we're doing well until the whole yes. and we're still doing well. issue started happening. Yeah. We're still doing well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're still. So, do you think we should be scared if we don't structure our industry? We should be scared of the East African guys and a few other African countries coming to take over music for us in Africa. Why you are, why you are, we are using an example of the East Africans. Mm. You are looking at them at the east, right? From the west, the west are coming. You understand? Whether they are taking advantage, whether they are infiltrating, whether they are colonizing, whether they are implementing, and whatever whatever adjective you want to, you you want to use, they are there. It's happening already. I think people like Diamond Platinums and all these people that sort of like uh, dance with us to put it in, in a way. They like our music, they do our music, they dance with us. Ghanaian people, vice versa, you understand. That is still African community. Going back to what Mr. Easy says, state gate. State gate will now become country gate. Country gate will now become African gate. You understand? It's still, a, it's, it's, still, it's still an acceptable gate and community. But what we are seeing now is because we're getting a lot of mouth outside. You know, we're on billboard. We're on Hot 97 in New York. We're on uh, BET. We're on this. We're on that. The word, me and you have spoken about this before. Colonization is, is, is in your head. It is not chains. It is not slavery. You understand? If they give you a contract, I've, I've even, I do a lot of pro bono work. So I get a lot of people just call me and say, ah, Uncle Ayo. Uh, this and that and that, and I'll just give them consultation on the phone. I'm not charging anybody. So I get a lot of people that call me and say things like, oh, I did this with this company in the US, in one of the big ones, I won't say the name, and he's a producer for a big artist. 
So as a producer, he wants his uh, publishing, you know, and he said, the deal that he gave me, I'm like, I'm so let me look at it. And I'll say, well, you know, tell them that this, so I do a lot of, so I know what they do. These foreign companies, even if they are international, global uh, record labels, they give us a deal that we will not accept in our country, but we'll accept it with them. You know why? Because we want to blow internationally. We want to blow mm. foreign. You understand? We, we want to collect Grammy, which, which is okay, by the way. You know, Grammy, Grammy is a, you know, it's an award. It's a, it's a nice award. You understand? Because we want to do this, we want to do that. We will accept a lot of stuff from them. And we, 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 we rationalize it by saying that they are, they, are, they are our same color. You understand? Do, do you get what I'm saying, Ubi? Yeah. Like they are, our, they, are our, they are our people. You understand? But they represent the big, the big five, the big labels. You understand? And they will give deals where, you know, before you even, before you even see anything said, you are owing for like the first three years of your, of your contract. But you know why? I'm still international. I'm still going to New York. I'm still going to LA. I'm still doing shows and stuff like that, which is always down to the personal. It's always down to personal choice. You understand? So are these the people we are referring to as gatekeepers? If some people will gladly, I'm trying as much as possible. I like to, I like to use real life scenarios, but I'm trying not to mention names because you know, I don't want it to become something else. Like, if you get a deal that, that will favor you, but does not favor your industry, you yourself, Ubi, should I ask you that question? Which one would you take first? The one that favors you or the one that favors the industry? The one that favors me, first of all. Uh -huh, thank you. But if there's no chance of it favoring your industry, or this one that you're signing excludes you from when people are doing something in your industry, you cannot put them out. You will still take it. That's the attitude I'm talking about. You understand? So yeah. if, if there's going to be any colonization, if there's going to be any stealing of our music, it is going to, it's going to be like slavery, where when the white man came to take us as slaves, some of us were giving them the slave in exchange for money. Do you understand? It is happening already in the music industry, and we're seeing it over and over again. Mm. So for me, when people start talking about gatekeepers and anything nobody represents anybody everybody represents themselves that is okay we need to change our attitude okay um advances and investments you just had me speak to you just had advances. me speak to let, let okay. me let me let me ask a question let me ask a yeah. question when akin was talk when i was talking to yes. akin yes. i made a point of it Yes. Yeah. Yes. He said something. I asked him, an artist has a five year contract. Yes. He has done he has done three years out of that contract. Yes. And he's left with um okay, let, let, let me use techno for example, right? Techno did two years into his contract and mm -hmm. You know, he had a holiday when he came in. He had dance. But things have not picked up. You know, when an artist, it's not about just having a hit song. Things must pick up for you as an artist for, I for you to start grossing. You know, your brand yeah. presence, you know, and, yes. and the acceptance. Mm -hmm. Now, so a, almost a year after dance, or a year and a half after dance and holiday, nothing mm -hmm. was really happening. Mm -hmm. Then something happened on towards the end of, of the middle of the third year, ending of the when, third year. When contract is less than six months. No, when contract is less than two years to end. Okay, five years. Okay, okay, okay. I get you. I get you. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So yeah, Anne and Akin were talking about this thing, and you, I'm sure you were listening. So yes. when an artist has an artist has five year contract, the record label mm -hmm. has spent. A lot of money. Let's say, let's put it at the number of a hundred million for yes, the first yes. for the first um, three years. Yes, right. And the label mm -hmm. doesn't. The artist doesn't make money. Mm -hmm. And then the, the label goes broke. Okay. Do you support that the artist should walk out of the contract? No. So, okay. Now, 
Akinyemi was in support that, okay, the artist can work out on a contract because there no. cannot be a contract that will not function. Now, I want you to answer I all these questions that. at once. Yeah? Yes. So, do you, do you think that with Akin's suggestion, do you think that monies now should be given to artists as advances to pay with because let's call it advances, let's not call it a loan. Because the Yibo man, when you go to Universal and, and Co, they, they tell you these are advances. Of course, advances. Right? Advances, money, first money in, first money out. Yes, exactly. So, so do we do we say we, we should give out advances to the artists, expecting them to pay back? Do you understand what I'm saying? Expecting them to pay back, whether you do well or not, you pay back my money. Of course, of course, that's what it is. Nobody says anything in the contract about, you know, we don't know whether it's going to do well. We're all betting. We're all throwing our dice. You understand? The person that's putting the money down, the person that's uh, 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 pledging the work, and the person that's pledging the talent. Let me address the issue of should the artist work out if the label goes broke? Unless it's stated in the contract. If it's not, you understand. We, you're, 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 you're part of the obligation is 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 to fulfill your contract that's what i'm saying our attitude don't just say oh because uh i'll just you know i'll go bankrupt no your contract is still with that person whether you are now going to negotiate out of the contract is another thing or if it's stipulated in the contract that should in case the label declares bankruptcy because that's when you are really broke <laughs> you understand if you are telling me that you are broke i might not believe you but if you now declare bankruptcy, that means legally you are declaring that you are broke. So if it says there in the contract, but if it doesn't say in the contract, you should not work out of the contract. You should renegotiate your contract and negotiate your exit, which is one of the points he made as well about having an exit. You understand? There's an exit. Yeah. Uh, the story I was telling you before, one of the other clients who's male that was signed by the big label, you know, I negotiated his exit contract as well. So there's always a negotiation on the exit. Should in case, in the case of this big label, which I'm not going to mention the name, I'm trying not to, it was not bankruptcy. It was actually an investment into that big company. So it became a bit more, you know, valuable. You understand? Which means they can now take this guy's music that they still own his masters and, and share his publishing onto a bigger and global level. So I needed to negotiate his out of his previous contract so that when his catalog now becomes more valuable because it's packed with a package of other songs and other big names on the label, it becomes more. So, you know, these are the kind of things that if it's not in the contract, you can renegotiate. And that's what I did. And thank, thank God we had a nice exit and they were all bigging themselves up on Twitter and Instagram. And it's all good. That is the sign of somebody that has a lawyer at the beginning, at the end of the contract. You understand? So if right. you're telling me that if you're, sorry, if you're telling me that if somebody goes broke, you will now leave. No, it's not an automatic. Going broke is not going broke is not a breach. Do you get it? Going broke yeah. is not a, nobody plans to go broke. So going broke is not a breach of contract. It just means that okay, things are gonna things this thing this contract go rugged, you know that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> it means you know what? We didn't sell as much as we we thought so you know instead of us using Clarence Peters, let's go and use a uh, idioma uh, that just uh, you know that just came out of uh, theater arts. He has some camera. You understand? It means this year go rugged. So, but if you don't like that and you you, you prefer to see Clarence Peters on your videos or or T.G. Omori or the big you know you don't want to go for an unknown uh, an unknown uh, 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 video director which costs less, you will now renegotiate and say, look, Baba. I can't be I can't be going down, you understand, and we renegotiate. But it is not an automatic clause for you to leave your contract. No, that's the answer. So you know, I I, I think a lot of lawyers are the reasons why um, the issues we currently have in our industry are, are, are very, very persistent. Yes. And I've seen contracts, and when I look at the contracts, I'll just start laughing. <laughs> because, Me too. Me too. because when I look at the contract, I just start laughing. You know, mm. 
You know, when I pick up a contract, the first, you know, the first place I always go to, what the label is meant to do and what the artist is meant to do. The second place Ruby, I go to. Are you sure, are you sure it's not the <laughs> bottom line? Are you sure it's yeah? not the splits? <laughs> no, I don't look at the introduction. That, that, that's not my business. I just quickly go to where the, what the label is meant to do and what the artist is meant to do. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know that? I, I, I look at the contract one time and I found out that the label has hung themselves in a, a you know, this rope. Because they felt yeah. like they have a lot of money to do it. Yes. I'm not against record labels that sign an artist and give you a house, give you a car, give you everything. We right? call them we, we call them too much money records. Too yeah, much too money. much money records. So yes. mm -hmm. when I look at the contract, I was reading, I was just reading through the contract. Not that they called me to, to read the contract. I just went to mm -hmm. visit a friend and they say, ah, we'll be frankly is here, ah, bro. Um I want to sign, my brother is going to be signed by my friend. Yes. Can you look at his contract that they gave him? So I said, where's your brother? The guy walked up to me. I, so I just said, let me, see. so I was looking at the contract. Now, this guy is going to get a C300 as a car, a four bedroom apartment, yeah. right? His car is yeah. going to be filled and everything. This was- That apartment should be in Lekki. That apartment should be in Lekki, yo. Yeah, exactly. They are refusing apartments in uh, Magodo. It's lucky they have to yeah. specify. So when I looked uh -huh. through that contract, automatically, I told the boy, I told the, um, I asked the guy, I went to the contract, I found out that if at any time he defaults in his contract, the house, the car, yes. everything will first of all be taken away from him. Look at that. So, so I now yeah. told him, I said, what you are what you what they are giving you is kind of borrowed now at mm -hmm. every point in time you make a mistake going forward they'll right? talk they'll talk your chain they'll, they'll put they'll, your chain, they'll, 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 yeah, they'll talk talk your chain because yeah they will talk your chain. because they automatically they put you somewhere i said the only way i'll let you sign this contract is if those things belong to you but i also said to the guy i said listen you are a very did you ask for these things? He said, yes. I said, I think it's a, you're, you're, you'll be very greedy and laid back and, and uh, lazy if you, take on, if you take these things. I said, listen. And because, and because some of them don't even know that an advance is recoupable. Recoupable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I said, listen, your brother is not chasing you away. Stay with your brother. Drive his car when you have to. But know one thing. Yeah? Just know yeah. one thing. Yeah work hard and do your business how you need to do it now yeah mm -hmm. the contract was not up to one year the guy went bankrupt and said he's not doing music again so just know that automatically you would have collected the car and sold it and done other things so now let's go that's become money into, don't finish money don't yeah. finish records <laughs> so let's go into straight into Coston and p-man oh okay okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ask you any question about that? But I okay. want you to dig deep on question and, and payment. Okay. Okay. Now, first of all, let me state categorically that I'm not a fan of having just one CMO in the country. It's 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 crazy. That's another thing. Can you hear me? Yes. Having yeah, having one CMO <laughs> is crazy for a country as diverse and as big as ours and our entertainment industry for as for as, as our inter entertainment industry is as big and profitable one cmo is a no no it's it's crazy that's one of the things that when some people say they are industry custodians they will go to abuja and go and collect a law that gives them the mandate only one of them only you know only them so that's the first thing that's wrong with the the structure of it, in this industry and then P man, P that first part of the answer was about uh, Koson. And then P man, do you know what I know more about P man than anything else? Is the controversies. P man has become a circus over time. You understand? It has become a circus over time where it is also, it, it is always about the politics, it is always about. The, who, who is the chairman? Ah, some fractions are saying no, it's Delia Biodun. 
and another one we say no is uh, Okoroji or Sonny Ade or Christy S. You know, it is it, when I was growing up, the only thing I knew about P Man was the controversies about who's the chairman. So P Man has become a political circus that they have actually forgotten what they are supposed to do for the for the music industry. And let me now liken it to what Koson is and what Koson has become now. Koson has become a political circus that has forgotten what it's supposed to be doing for the artist. What I'm saying here, I am not trying to be controversial, but me, I, that's the reason why I don't do too many interviews. Me, I like to talk my own. I will open my mouth and I will test, I will test my microphone. P man has become uh, Koson, has, <laughs> Koson has become another P man where it is now about Okoroji and Audu and uh, Efe and uh, their fight with MCSN. Or yesterday we heard that their contract has been uh, suspended, or now they are celebrating 10th anniversary. And you know, it, it, P man has become content, content provider. They are providing us with legal controversy content that payment. Collection, rather. Collection and payment to the artist. That's their first job. They've forgotten that. Coming back to our attitude. Coming back. Uh, Audrey Macaulay was telling me what's the Nigerian factor. That is the Nigerian factor. If BMI... Uh, 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 what's the other? Aska, Sesak, all these people. We don't hear about their controversies. I don't know who the chairman of Sesak is. Or... Or, 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 or BMI. I don't. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not concerned about who they are fighting to be chairman or how many tenors that they've had or their internal struggles. We hear about payment, representation, exploiting your music, publishing, songwriters, producers, uh, uh, composers. That's what we hear about. In Nigeria, what we hear about Koson and P-Man are about the controversies about who is the chairman. Coming back to, we are our own gatekeepers. If there's somebody that is gatekeeping for, for a collection of people, it will become political and it will become a circus. That's why so, I said Koson. When I said Koson and P-Man, I'm like, hmm. But anyway, Ayo. let's just... Ayo, one minute. Discussion. One minute. Yeah, go ahead. In a country where a lot of musicians are very vocal about... In a country where a lot of musicians are very, and entertainment executives are very vocal about who leads us as a country, mm -hmm. do you think that Tony Okoroji's tenor as P man, as a Koson, um, as, as, at the helm of affairs of Koson, is not over? Do you think it shouldn't be over a long time ago? Well, hmm. first of all, do, do they have terms? I don't know. I, I have not read their mem memos. So I don't know if they have terms. But if they do, it's a choice whether, if, if they do, and he's still, he still eligible to keep contesting every year or every election, and he gets elected, that's one thing. It's like Senate, you understand? If they keep electing you, you keep going back for re-election. So if that's the case, then no problem. Is Tony Okoroji doing a good job? My honest question, my honest answer is I don't know. I don't know because we are not hearing anything. So I don't know if it's a good job or a bad job for me to determine whether I should be there or not. I knew Tony Okoroji as an artist. You know, I, you know, I know Tony Okoroji. I'm, you know, I'm old enough to know that Tony Okoroji is an artist. You understand? And he's been in the industry and he's been in the industry when we had Sony Music, we had Putsin, we had uh, Decca, we had all these people. So he knows all these rights. He knows how it, it works. How we used to work back in the 70s. You understand? Before music became a lava. You understand? Music distribution became a lava. I, I, I would say he's experienced and he's, he's, he's uh, eligible to be where he is. For how long, I don't know. It depends on their memax. It, de it depends on their constitution. But is it doing a good job or a bad job? I don't know. Finally, if you ask me, do we need new blood in Koson? My answer is absolutely yes. We need new blood in Koson. That's my, that's my answer. Okay, so um, as a lawyer, jurisprudence, do I go there? Go, go, go. Let's, 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 
let's let's get into it. You know, I wanted to go, I wanted to go, I wanted to go into the uh, jurisprudence because that reveals the historical, moral, and cultural basis. Yes. Of, yes. Of a but, particular legal concept, right? Uh -huh. So, but, if, but but before you before, before, let me just give you a disclaimer. I've only been called to bar in Nigeria for two years, but I've been a lawyer for twenty-one years in England. You understand? Mm. So my 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 what's it called? My my ginger for Nigerian law was shattered <laughs> after going through law school in Nigeria. My ginger for Nigerian law has been shattered because what they taught us in law school is totally opposite of what's happening in real life. But continue your yeah. question. So, so I just want to give that uh, disclaimer. Yeah, go I'm ahead. I'm just if, if if I'm going to uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> I <laughs> so you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to go very legal, quoting a few. Go ahead. Do you think that in that same cousin, right? In mm -hmm. that same cousin, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for young men and young women in our entertainment industry, right? <laughs> so you, you have to give me a comment. So for young men and young women in our industry, do you think yes. that we cannot wake up every day and go and look look at the the laws that guide um, the historical um, documents, the moral and the cultural basis of what we are doing, what or what Koson is doing. You think that we cannot yes. go there and legally ask for that document and review, and ask that the government should review terms of service? Because Tony Okorji has been, from what I understand, he's been there for like thirty something years. If I'm right. Yeah, well, not 30, because Coston is not 30-something years. But I think you are mixing it up with Coston and P-Man. But you know what? He used to be P-Man president. He used to be P-Man president. That's what I'm so saying. It's almost like, so, yeah, it's almost like yeah. he's been there. Uh -huh, yes. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at that, that means at the time, mm -hmm. he was playing in between Coston and P-Man. I, yes. I was still maybe two or three years old. <laughs> and I'm not I, 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 was, I was maybe 12. I understand yeah, I'm not saying. growing... Pardon? I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm now grown in an industry where there are young, energetic guys like t uh, uh, ladies like Su DJ Supermodel, Taya and Liu, DJ Spino, Aldo Mekori, Apio Morikwe, and we have allow a man to be in that place for that, those years. Oh, can't we take <laughs> KPMV to go and audit what they're doing? I just called you Obi now because of what Aldo said before. Obi. <laughs> Well, Ubi, something needs to happen. Ubi, let me say you, let me tell you one thing. You have just described Nigeria. Do you know that? You have just you, in trying to describe how ecology has been there since you were two years old and is still there. You have just described Nigeria. How old was how old were you when Buhari was president or uh, head of state of this country? And is still there. Whether or not he has gone and come back, oh, but is we are now recycling. You understand? So, if you are telling me this thing, it's the same thing as Nigeria. So, the way we, the, the, the way we talk about, we should get uh, uh, not too young to vote. The way we talk about young people now, going, like Akin Alabi, people going into politics now so that they can be leaders of now, not tomorrow, because by the time we wait for tomorrow, we say don't hold. It's the same way that you are talking about Tony Okoroji and Koson. Tony Okoroji is the one that needs to bleed in the new people, and he has not done that. He needs to blend the Perpetual old and the new. Thank you. Perpetual he has succession. Not done that. He has not done that. You know why? You know why? You know why? Because he is following that mandate, or he's following that document. He is following that, that government document that gives him the power to do so. It's like most people in the Senate. It's like most people in the Senate. Once you have a, 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 a strong grasp of the Nigerian constitution, you can do anyhow in the Senate because the Nigerian, custom, uh, the Nigerian uh, constitution allows for you to do anyhow. You understand? If you get the, enough quorum, if you have you know, two out of three or four out of five, you understand? So as long as you can give the requirements, the law does not remove you from your seat. That is one thing that I think Tony Okoroji, if he's listening or if he's going to watch this show uh, later, a, re a recorded uh, a broadcast, if you understand that hmm. we expect him, we expect him to bleed in new blood, uh, to bring in new blood. 
to replace him. And really, I think the time is now. I am not asking, I am not, I am not um, advocating for him to lose his source of income. Do you know what I mean? That's not what I'm saying. But like I said before, I said, look, my own, when people talk about me now, they talk about 20 years ago, 20, 20 something years ago. My own time don't pass. I'm just chilling now. You understand? I'm chilling. I'm chilling on the investments that I've made from the money that I've made. You know, if I can enter the industry now and do one or two things, like I'm in partnership with Foza and Ire, we have a you know law firm together and we do entertainment law and stuff like that. You understand? That's our contribution now. I don't need to go and be struggling with anybody. Tony Okoroji does not need to be dragging anything with anybody. He should just, he, sh he should, ah, geez, I don't want to say this, but he should, okay. he should respect himself. He should respect himself to know that there's a, there's a new generation here. They're not tomorrow's generation. They are, they are here now. They are working with you in the same corridor of that seven, seven uh, floor building in, in Ikeja. These people are here now. Tony Okoroji should see it that if he leaves now and appoints somebody or brings in people, he will be a champion for life. He will be a legend that used to be an artist back in the 70s and he has headed P-Man, he has headed Coson, and he has given that mandate to somebody younger with more social media savvy and all that. Tony Okoroji will get, uh, what's the highest? MON. You understand? We'll build him a statue. 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 On arrival. <laughs> so, you know Tony what? Okoroji should, Tony Okoroji should be a legend. A legend. Most people don't know that Tony Okoroji used to be an artist. He used to gel his hair like, like the Jacksons. So, he will have gone from that to, to this guy that has given the young people the, the, the button. Let's, let's now take it. You said now take, take, take and pass where me I carry and reach. You know that kind of thing. Tony Okoroji should just be a legend now and just let somebody else enter that place. That's all I'm okay, saying. Okay, so my last question before you go. Uh, I don't want to is, go now. I don't want to go. You don't want to go. Don't worry, I can bring you back. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, my last question before I bring on my, uh, the next person on the show. Yes. Depression, ADR. Yes. Yes. When I'm, I say that I've come to study a lot of things in our industry and understand that depression is the cause for a lot of artists' outburst. Right? Yes. Depression, greed, lack of education. Most of the time, these artists want a particular thing and those things don't happen. Mm. But do you think that every label part of the contract or part of the clauses they should put that they, had, um, that they should put on their contract should be that when there are disputes, the best way to go about it is ADR. Yes. Right? Now, in setting up, in going for ADR, who are the people... You have to, think... you have to edu let's, let's keep educating people as we are going along. Some people, somebody yes. just said... ADR is alternative dispute alternative resolution. Alternative dispute resolution. Yeah. You said yeah, you alternative dispute outside uh, of court. And, uh, yeah. uh, alternative mm -hmm. dispute mm -hmm. resolution. Yes. Now, my, my question is this, right? In a case where an artist is going through depression, and is the reason yes. why he's ranting, because every artist would get to a, 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 position, a point where they feel like their career would have been in a certain point, but their careers are not there. And they start feeling some type of way. Now, should contracts also include that if you feel some type of way, the first place to go is to look for somebody to talk to who is a professional in terms of, um, how, what, what's that their name? They call them again. Um, life, is it a life coach or something? What do they call them? The guys that do depression, what's it? I've just... It just escaped my head. So hey, what, get a life what? Psychologist or what? Or psychiatrist? No, like, a life, like a life coach. Someone to talk to you, you know, oh, and life, help you. Life coach, life coach, life, life coaches are not uh, clinical depression. You know, no, I'm I, just saying, life I, coach I, is something sorry, to therapist. Yeah. Therapy, sorry. Therapist, exactly. Life coach is life coach. Therapist. Yeah. So get a I therapist. I wake up tomorrow and call myself life coach. Yeah. So mm -hmm. do you think, my question is this, eh? do you think therapists should be included during... ADRs. No, I'm serious. Do you think yes. so? <laughs> yes. So, now, having said that, what do you think 
the setup of an ADR should be? Okay. ADR and depression, two different things. But let me talk about ADR first before I talk about as much as I know about depression. So ADR, alternative dispute resolution, the, I, I never write a contract that doesn't have the first option if there's a dispute to go to uh, ADR, to go to mediation or to go to you know, arbitration. You understand? Anytime I write a contract, I always put it there as the first uh, 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 option, the first recourse if there's any breach or if there's any misunderstanding. So I always do that in all my contracts. And yes, they should have it in all their contracts. You should first of all exhaust your option for mediation before you start going to court. You get. So yeah. the, the, the answer to that question is yes, yes, yes. Now, depression, which is something different. I have been in this industry enough. I have managed in the UK, the US, worldwide, Nigeria. I have managed Nigerian artists. I've managed uh, Fuji artists, hip hop artists, you know, whatever. I, you know, I've, I've managed international artists. I've, I've been there, done that, bought the t shirt Depression is a monster that lives amongst us in this, our industry. When they were talking about that whole Cynthia Morgan uh, issue, when the first Cynthia Morgan, when the, the first time Cynthia Morgan issue blew up, people were saying, oh, she's been depressed. Uh, now they are doing GoFundMe for her to come back in the music industry. I'm like, I don't know. It sounds like a, it sounds like an experiment. But people are, people always miss, people mistake, generally people mistake depression for sadness in, in, in Nigeria. Even though sadness is part of depression, but sadness is not depression. Depression in its full glory will make you want to go and kill yourself. Number one. You understand? <laughs> it, is not, it is not, oh, I'm broke. I'm depressed. You know, I, I didn't have any money that time I was depressed. No, 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 no. You just didn't have any money and you were broke. So people say depression all the time when they are a little sad, when they don't get their way in the music, you know. Like you were asking Jude the other day about, um, about final say, uh, artist uh, uh, cover art or producer or something. So artists will now say, uh, I'll just do it anyway, but you know, I don't like it. You now go and be sad and be saying, they didn't let you. But depression is totally different. So I said, look, I tweeted, I said, if we're talking about, if, if we're talking about Cynthia Morgan being depressed, the first thing you need to do, that money that you're raising for her, raise it for her so that she can get therapists and she can get proper care to get back into functioning as a human being before you now throw her back into the jungle, which is the music business. Because the music business, depression is like an artist though. Depression is an artist that you see in the club every night. Depression is, this, is an artist that has Instagram page that you are looking at every day. And what I mean by that is, you are, you are an artist, you are looking at the video that just bought the house at Banana Island. You understand? That shit caused depression for some other artists. You are looking online or you are, you are going to a club, one artist is buying, you know, four tables at Quillox, he's buying a truckload of, uh, what's that MI song? We, you know, we bought the bar or bullion, we carrying bullion bar to be buying the whole bar. Some artists get they, they get depression from that. As sad and as 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 sad as that is, it is real. Depression is just looking at you, Ubi, flying in private jets. You understand? So this happens to all the artists. So it's not about oh, I thought I was going to be making a million a show now. I don't even have booking of 200,000 or I should, you know, people are talking about uh, somebody charging 7 million per show. You are thinking that you will be charging 7 million per show in the next year and you are still collecting 800, which is still a lot of money for some artists. But you are depressed that that person, that other artist is making more money. Do you know what I'm saying? So that depression, yeah. eh, cl the, it, cl clinically, depression is a mental illness. It's a disorder that when it enters your head, you really cannot shake it off. You have to manage it. And I'll tell you in this industry, without mentioning names, half of the industry right now, they are depressed. So fuck what Cynthia Morgan is talking about. One minute. Depression. One minute. Ayo, before you go on, before you go on, let me pause you for, yeah. for one minute. Yes. I said this the other day that, I said it, uh, okay, I think I was interviewed by Ebuka on yes. Robin Mines three Sundays ago. Yes. And I said that, pick up your phones and call 
artists, co co um, um, actors, and check up on them. People are currently going through yes. a lot of depression. So well, people do not understand that. You know, you know, a lot of artists don't say a lot of artists are about lao lao. As he come with chop yeah. and it will come tomorrow. Of course. So and of course. unfortunately, not all artists have the, the kind of um, income that comes out from their streaming uh, revenues, right? Yes, yes. So I said this on Audu's show, and I got some people attacking me on social media, on Twitter, because I, I, I said what I know it's possible in our industry. Mental health possible. is very, it's very true. important. It's See, true. There's, yeah. There are a lot of artists in this industry. There are a lot of artists in this industry that are, that are on antidepressants as we speak. Yes, I, I said they this. They take antidepressants every day because they need it to function. They need it to function. So, so for me, for me, I think whatever, whatever we're doing here, so we are, we are like um, 10 minutes to, to cut off from our um, one hour mark. So I'm just going to run out at 10 minutes so that I can start a new You're life. Breaking. You're breaking yeah, up. I'll... You're breaking up. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You're breaking up. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. You're breaking up as you. well. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? 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 I can't hear you. I can hear you, but your video is paused. I can't hear you. I think it's my I think it's from my side. I don't know what's going on. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Oh. So I wanted to run off um our next 10 minutes so that when we come in, we bring on Taya and Liu. Can you hear me now? Can you hear Hi. me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's just, okay. I can hear you now. Yeah, I think sometimes okay. I think the internet just the yeah. So I want to I want us to run out on the next ten minutes, um, so that when we restart the live, okay. we bring on time. So I want to just um, okay, for no us problem. to no problem for us to knock no out a few things, right? No problem. I'm here. In in our in our industry as it stands, right? Yes, yes. This depression thing has, I've been talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I've been saying this thing that if we don't check, if you're an artist manager, the fact yes. that your artist is not going for shows right now is an opportunity for you to check on this artist. Yes. And I've been praying that post COVID 19, the mm -hmm. songs that we we'll hear are not sad songs because all these uh, <laughs> artists might start singing RB songs and they'll be giving us uh, sad songs, unfortunately. They'll be singing quarantine, the quarantine <laughs> sessions. <laughs> so I want to ask you a question. Yes. You've heard of the Ubi music model? Yes. Privately and uh, publicly, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. I'm a record label. Two. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. come together. You're a lawyer, that's why I'm asking you this question. The artist the record label, we are together. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's... Uh, I can hear you, but go ahead. Go ahead. I'm picking up what you're saying, Sean. Okay. So, the artist and the record label are partners. Yes. The record label, for safety of his investment, takes his mm -hmm. invest investment to a bank. <laughs> go ahead. I knew this Listen, you going. Okay, my name is Ubi Ekapong of Femme. Yes. The entertainment name, everyone knows me, is Ubi Franklin. Yes. Now, Ubi Ekapong of Femme 
has given has gone to put this money in a bank, my son's bank account, and decided yes. that if I have to do music business because of the things that have happened in the, the entertainment industry so far, mm -hmm. I'll get the I'll get the bank to loan me and the artist mm -hmm. money from what I have given them to keep for my son. Yes. So do you think that, from a legal standpoint, do you think that it would be good for labels to start getting these monies from artists? Mm -hmm. Right? Getting this money mm -hmm. from... So the artist goes to the bank, signs the loan with the record label, collecting the loan for the music. Do you think that works? Mm -hmm. Not in Nigeria. When you were, when you were explaining it to, to Jude the other night... I, I, I commented, I said, this would not work in Nigeria. Okay. The reason why, two things, not for the label. Sometimes label are the, they are the ones with the money. But the artist, I don't know any artist, really. They might say it to... <laughs> someone said, say someone said I've, I've collected microfinance back license. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, artists might say it to... But artists will always want to run on OPP, which is other people's money. I don't know any artist that feels so, so certain and so confident about his career that if he has 10 million, he will launch himself. The artist would rather still go and get that money from somewhere. There might be a couple that have money that want to push themselves. But the thing is, artists don't like to spend their own money. So for them to go and be using that money to be doing collateral, which is really what you are saying, in a bank, they're not going to be interested. You would, you would, you would, you, it will be very hard for you to find. And then, two, okay, na, okay, continue. Let continue. me say two Nigerian, Ni the two, the, the second point is Nigerian banks. Nigerian banks are not interested in the entertainment industry. They might want to sponsor for eyeballs and for publicity and for exposure, but they don't want to sponsor. How many banks have I gone to? This music business that I'm talking about, I've tried to push this music business 12. 11 years ago, nobody would, you know, the banks. That's why I was, I was laughing. But there was, there, was, there, was, there was one of our colleagues that got money from Sky Bank at the time. What's this guy called? Tony, Tony. Tony Wakala. Yes. But Tony is a magician. Tony knows <laughs> how. <laughs> you and I, you and I, you and I know Tony. You and I know Tony Wakala. Big up to Tony Wakala, though. He's a master, he's a magician. He can, he can sit in front of you and get money out. You understand? But to implement it is where things, you know, you run into, uh, uh, what's it called, resistance. So when I'm talking about banks, when I saw that Cynthia Morgan thing and Sterling Bank was doing all that nonsense, this same Sterling Bank, Ask FOSA, we approached them last year. They turned us down. FOSA and I are partners in law firm and IRE. We approached them. They are our bankers. We have two or three accounts with them. You understand? They turned us down. But they are seeing cheap publicity and the uh, personal crisis that's trending. They want to jump on it. That's why I felt, I felt so bad. If you take this thing to a bank in Nigeria, they will turn you down. The same way, you, uh, you know, a big bank will pay an artist one point, rumored 1.2 billion, you understand, and not put 100 million into sponsoring a music conference. You get what I'm saying? So, Nigerian banks, I don't have any faith in them. Heritage Bank, and I don't like saying names, but Heritage, Heritage Bank had an entertainment desk one time, and their intentions were good, you understand. And some of the things that they did, I would commend them for, you understand. But maybe they've hit, they've hit like a turbulence, and they, you know, they have to turn back and go and land, you understand. But the thing is, they tried to actually have an entertainment uh, 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 desk, at Heritage Bank. So I don't really believe in Nigerian banks when it comes to that. I don't. If we are really serious, let me say this. If we are really serious, if you bring money, if Aldo brings money, if uh, Obi Asika brings money, if Efe brings money, if whoever it is that want to contribute and make like a similar like this happen, fine. That money, money, money is not, is not their gift. Though. We do it ourselves. You understand? And set up these conferences ourselves instead of waiting for sponsors or waiting for banks. Let's educate people. Let's open opportunities for people. Let's bring people in. As much as you think you know, there are some of these young cats that know more than you. 
That's uh, what I've learned let me a long tell you. time ago. Ayo, ayo, ayo. This, in, these conversations we've been having, eh? sometimes mm -hmm. somebody is saying something in my head. I'm looking, it looks like I'm stupid because I really didn't know some of the things that people are saying. So that's why I'm saying that, you see, yeah. my time here, I sit sometimes for, for, for four hours. It's not wasted. I'm learning so much. Now, but the thing is... The, Me too, the thing I'm learning. I, yeah. I'm learning. The thing I want to tell you, so, uh, the thing I also want to tell you is, that's, this is the reason why we set up the conference. Because part of the entertainment conference is going to have um, monetary policies and, and uh, uh, financial inclusion. We are going to have a financial inclusion panel. Real, we want, we want this conference. I hope it comes to real shit. We want not real see. education, real opportunities, not celebrity, Ayo. not celebrity. Ayo, don't worry. Panel. Every day, every day we have four hours. Every day is a one week conference. And now we have been planning. We we'll reach out to as many people as possible. It's a one week conference. Mm -hmm. Every day is four hours. It's going Go to ahead. be live on Hip TV. It's going to be live on Pop Central. We are sitting down for them. Said it's going to be on YouTube. We are discussing yeah. things that will help us. Then so yes. I can put a proper policy document. You understand? Yes. Trust me. Our industry needs a structure. It needs a system and it needs partnerships. Do you understand? We yes. should stop doing where, when we have yes. hustled and grown ourselves. They come and now give us endorsement and tie us down and other companies cannot work with us. We should get yes. to a point where they are exactly. investing in the industry. Exactly. You understand? For us to be exactly. able to move on. So, yes. man... Trust me, I, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. But before we go, I want you to say thank your you. final... I want you to say some... You know, to touch a few things that we've discussed and something that you, you might want to talk about that I have not asked before we, we, uh, we start the live and bring on uh, Ty. Okay. The only thing I'll say, really, is going back to the first thing I said. The education is one thing. We have educated people. We have lawyers. We lawyers through here. Lawyers through this forum. You understand? We, you know, we, 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 we have entertainment lawyers now that are doing great work. We just have to work on our attitude. That our Nigerian attitude that we can, we, can, we, we can pull out of contracts is not good. I see it all the time. This, our attitude of, of especially artists, when they have the following. You know artists, when they get on stage and they say, everybody put your hands in the air, wave it like you just don't care. And they see people sing their songs. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't want to leave that stage. So when they come backstage and when they're supposed to be, you know, taking care of business, they think they're still on stage. You understand? So our artists mm -hmm. need to learn that there's off stage and there's on stage. Do business. Uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, uh, stay true to your contract. If you feel any way about your contract, ask your guy, ask your label or whoever signed you that you want to renegotiate. There's no law against requesting for a renegotiation they might say no <laughs> you understand but who knows they might say yes before you now start you know going into <laughs> depression like we talk about and then thinking that public public opinion matters public opinion matters jack when you have a contract artists should know that and then also labels labels should know that it is it is the product which is the talent of the artist that they are exploiting to make money. So there are some labels that sign artists and it becomes like, um, even if it's a slavery contract or even not a slavery contract, they think artists belong to them. Artists don't belong to them. We all belong to ourselves. You understand? An artist that is going to be big is going to be big, whether they sign with you or XYZ Records. You understand? And yeah. they're still going to be big when they leave you. <laughs> so don't try and hold on to this artist to make it like your life your lifelong blood, uh, uh, what not blood, what's it called? Uh, milk, milk, uh, cow that you want to be milking. You understand? You let the artist go at the end of their contract. Don't come up with something that will still keep them. This attitude that I'm talking about is the Achilles heel in the Nigerian music industry. Our attitudes towards something that's legal or not legal or just an agreement has to change. And that's basically what I, I can add to all this conversation that everybody's been talking about. Contract are contracts, but whoever wants to break contract will break contract. Too. And they know they can get away with it. That's the attitude that I hate most in the music industry. All right, Ayo, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm sure